welcome to Watercolour with Amy. I'm Amy and today I'm going to show you some simple watercolour techniques that you can apply to an art piece and do yourself at home. This video is part of the Melbourne Library Makerspace series. I would like to start off by acknowledging the people of the Kulin Nations, the traditional custodians of this land. I'd like to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging, on whose land we learn, create and play. Today's video is number three of a three part series. If you're a very beginner, you might wanna pop back and check my first video out because I spend a little bit more time talking about different materials and some handy tips that might be useful for you today. Or you can start here, that's fine also. Today we're going to make wildflowers. Here's a list of the things you'll need today. The technique we're going to use today is wet on dry, just like the first week when we used wet on dry to overlap the different shapes. This week has some other similarities in that we're going to overlap our flower shapes as well. It's just a more complex version of the first week. Let's give it a go. First thing I'm going to do is mix up the colours that I want. I'm using a bit of cadmium red and a bit of potter's pink. in some of my other videos when you're working with wet on dry you really need to let each layer dry really thoroughly before you put the next layer on top so what I'm going to do with the flowers today is I'm going to do the bottom layer of the few different flowers that I'm going to show you and then all at the same time and then let it dry and put the next layer on you could use a pencil to sketch in the flower shapes that you want to create today. I'm not doing that because I just want it to sort of represent a flower. I'm going for a more free flowing wild version of it. They're not particular flowers that I'm doing like a botany book. They're more sort of a representation of wildflowers. When choosing what kind of leaf shapes you want to use, just have a look at flowers outside. If you've got a garden yourself, if you're lucky enough, or uh on the way to the train station. There's lots of different leaves and flowers around. Just check those shapes out and see if there's any that you like. I'm just putting in some basic petal shapes. That's where I want my middle to be. I've talked about this a little bit, but I will mention it again. When you're working with water watercolour, you want to start off very, very lightly and go darker each layer. Watercolour is not the same as other mediums. You always start light and end up dark. Put too much water on. Just use a little tissue and dab it up. Okay, that's all I'm going to do for those two particular types of flowers. The next flower I'm going to do, I suppose, is sort of a corn flowery type wild flower. This time I'm going to mix up some blue. And for my first layer, nice and light. <laughs> That's the fade shape of the cornflower that I'm looking for. This piece I'm not putting a whole lot of thought into whereabouts my flowers go. I'm just having a bit of a play, kind of like a wild field. There's no specific spot that I want my flowers. I want them just to be on my page somewhere. First layer for the blue cornflower type flowers. And the last flower I might do is a yellow paper daisy inspired flower. So I'm just going to mix up some yellow, some cadmium yellow. There we go, lots of water. That's nice and light. 
The reason I've chosen these three particular flowers is because they're all really different. So it looks great in a piece, but also it's a fun way to try out different shapes and see what you like. Now that that layer is completely dry, I'll move on to the next layer. This layer needs to be a little bit darker because we go light to dark. To make my paint darker, I'm just going to add more pigment. So for my next lot of leaves, with the slightly darker paint, I'm just overlapping. I'm overlapping half a leaf and then overlapping the other half a leaf of the other side. And this gives watercolour an opportunity to do what it does best, which is be beautifully transparent. Show all the layers underneath and all the different colours. Okay, now I'm going to do the next layer on the blue flowers. For the blue flowers, instead of overlapping petals, I'm working from the bottom all the way to the top, but I'm leaving probably about half a centimetre at the top, and that's how we're going to see the layers underneath. So I'm just not quite going all the way to the top, and I'll do that on each layer. Second layer of the blue done. And now onto the yellow. And that's the second layer all done. Time to let it dry. Okay, for my third layer, I'm going to be essentially doing the same thing, but a little bit less controlled. So for the center of my flowers, instead of having really nice petals around like we did for the first two layers I'm going to have them a little bit more kind of crazy and that'll just give it a, a softer look. I'm adding more pigment because every layer needs to be a little bit darker than the last. And last of all, the yellow flower, and I will do that again in the same way that I did the pink or the red flower. A little bit more chaotic around the middle where there's some vague petal shapes, but also just a whole lot of colour. Third layer done, time to dry. Now the flowers just need their finishing touches, the centre bit of the flower and the stems and leaves. So I'm going to choose a colour to pop in the centre of the yellow and in the centre of the red. I'm not going to do anything with the blue. And then I'm going to put on some green stems and leaves. Almost finished but not quite. I'm going to let that layer dry with a little bit of help from my hairdryer and then I'm going to put one more layer over the leaves and the stems because with watercolour layering is perfect. Yeah. 
and all finished. Now I've only used one colour per flower uh, and just made that colour darker each layer. You can use as many colours as you want and you can do as many layers as you want. It's all about just having a go and having a bit of fun. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you've enjoyed this series. Good luck with your own watercolour adventures and I'll see you next time. Bye.